k points right in the actual data set in standardized data i have 15 k points tcne on 15 k points takes about 10 to 15 minutes to run uh, depending on your laptop of course on my laptop it takes about 15 to 20 minutes okay and uh, so just just for simplicity i want to showcase showcase i want to show you the example with 1000 points so i'm just picking the first 1000 points and putting it in a data set called data underscore thousand. Similarly, I'm taking the top thousand labels and I'm putting it as labels underscore thousand. And I'll write the code with thousand. But remember, as an exercise, I strongly recommend you try TSNI. You try TSNI on 15k points and also on 42k points. Okay, it'll take you longer. You might have to uh, you might have to start running the code and take a coffee break or uh, take a take a stroll out, take a walk outside and then come back to find your results being there. Okay, it, take, it takes a little longer than, than usual, uh, than you're typically used to in computer science. Okay, so now let, let me define my model. My model can be defined very, very easily. <laughs> it, it's literally one line of code. Okay, so I, I want my, I'm defining my TSNI model. Uh, the variable is model, uh, and the function that I'm calling is the TSNI's constructor. And I'm saying my number of components is two, and the random state is zero. TSNI is a randomized algorithm, which means if you don't define this, the, if you run TSNI two times, you'll get slightly different results. By ensuring that the random state is always set to some number, you're going to get consistent or same results from one from one run of this program to the second run. If, if you skip this, running TSNI on the same data set two different times might result in slightly different outcomes. Okay, because TSNI is a randomized algorithm okay for those of you uh, who don't know what randomized algorithms are these are algorithms which will give slightly different results uh, that, uh, if you run them two or more times okay now uh, let's look at some default parameters the default perplexity is set to 200 and learning rate is set to 200 sorry the default perplexity is set to 30 okay and the default maximum number of iterations is thousand iterations so I'll leave the values at 30 and 1000. These are the two most important things that we will use. Okay, this is your perplexity as, as we have studied in the theory part. Perplexity is one of the most important parameters along with number of iterations. Okay, so let's let's just leave it at 30 and 1000 and I'll just say model.fit transform. Okay, this basically takes my 1000 data points and creates me TSNI data, which is of course two dimensional because I'm saying the number of components is two here, right? Now, what I'll do is the standard simple exercise. I basically combine my TSNI data with label data. Okay, I'm creating a new column called labels using uh, NumPy's V stack or vertical stacking. Okay, and I'm converting this TSNI data into a data frame with, with the first column being named dimensionality one, um, with the first column named dimensionality one, second column named dimensionality two, the third column being label, again, coming from here. Okay, once I have a data frame, I can now plot it using facet grid, okay? Again, with my hue as labels, with my coloring as labels. Now let's go and see the plot that we have. Uh, the plot that we have looks like this, literally like this. Now let's see, this looks way better than our PCA. Now if you look at this, and this is, by the way, this is just 1000 points and uh, with a perplexity of 30 and just 1000 iterations, very, very simple. Remember, all of our PCA was on 15,000 points. This makes very good sense. All of your zeros are well clustered here. All of your twos are somewhere in this region. Of course, there are some small overlaps here and there. Your nine is more widely spread and things like that. And remember, this is just 1,000 points and a perplexity of 30. If I just had 15,000 points or all the 42,000 points, and if I run it to 5,000 iterations or even 10,000 iterations, this value could be much better. That's what I want you to explore as an exercise. I'll tell you, I'll come to the exercise a little later. Okay. Now, what if, what if I change the perplexity? Okay. So in my code, it's just literally one, one parameter change. I'm keeping the number of components as two, my random state as zero. I'm just changing my perplexity to 50. That's all. The rest of the code is exactly the way we saw earlier. Okay. Now, when I see this, this looks very much, this is perplexity 50, remember. This looks very much like my this code here with perplexity 30. That shows that, okay, at th around 30 or 50 perplexity seems to make sense for 1000 points with 1000 iterations, right? This looks very, very similar, almost, almost identical. 
with probably small variations. Okay. Now the next question here is, what if I increase the number of iterations? Okay. So perplexity 50 seems to be fairly stable. Around 30 to 50 seems reasonably stable. And my random state, I'm just setting it to zero. Now instead of 1000 iterations, I want to make the number of iterations equals to 5000. Rest of the code stays the same. Okay. Now, when I go from 1000 iterations to 5000 iterations, the, the shape is very, very stable. These are the lessons that we learned in distill.pub, right? That we need to we need to try various values of perplexity. So we tried 30 and 50 this, this, and with, with 1000 iterations and both these shapes looked fairly stable. Then we increase the number of iterations from 1000 to 5000 and the shape still remains fairly stable. Okay, so we can take this 4000 points, of course, 4000 points, this shape seems to make pretty good sense. Of course, remember, when you go from 1000 points to 15,000 points or even 42,000 points, the shape, the points will be much well separated because that's more information out there. There is more information which makes, so my the ideal outcome here is if you take 42K data points and you try various perplexities around 30, 50, etc., find the good perplexity and run up to 5K to 10K iterations. Okay, that, 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 that's what I think will give you one of the best results out here. Again, that's something for you to explore. That's an exercise that I leave it for you to explore and understand. Now, just as a sanity check, what happens if I make my perplexity equals to two? Okay, it's all the same. Number of components two. Uh, I'm not touching the uh, number of iterations, which is thousand by default. Random state is zero. Now, as soon as I do that, I've lost all of the all of the information. The points are all over the place, right? So perplexity equals to two may not work very well. Okay, my recommendation is this: run the same run this code on forty two k points with various values of perplexity and number of iterations to understand TSNI much better. Okay, if part of K points is taking too long on your laptop, you can even do 15 K points, but don't forget to standardize your data before you do it. Okay, if you're doing for two K points, don't forget to do standardization as your data pre-processing step. Okay, please don't forget that. I'm writing short form here, but bear with me. Okay, this is this is the exercise that I would like to uh, I would like you to pursue. It might take more runs. It might be a little frustrating when you have to wait for 10, 15 minutes, uh, even sometimes even more on your laptop to get results. But that's very good. This way you'll understand what happens as number of points increase, as perplexity changes, and as number of iterations change. So if you recall, if you recall and go to our uh, Christopher Ola's blog, this is what you could eventually get if you are trying to use all of the data points. This, this visualization is perfect, right? So this is what you would get if you're trying to, uh, if, you're, if you're running MNIST